checked out the library today, reading, and she told us they just got the covers. Yesterday. Were the exterior of the entry? Yeah, I was like, I want to ask her. Yeah, she said, awesome. Well, everyone, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you everyone for coming and those watching, for those watching, I don't know if they can hear or not, but we're having some technical difficulties. So, we, uh, are you ready to go with that, Corey, for public hearing? You good to go, Kim? Uh, yeah, you might want to move it a little closer to them. It's hard to hear the mayor. If you just want to speak a little more. <laughs> okay. First on the agenda is public hearing. I'll go ahead and turn that over to you. All right. Uh, so this hearing is called to order at 7.04 p.m. on June 27, 2022 at the Board of Alderman Meeting Room in Carbon City Hall. It's conducted to consider the application for a conditional use permit filed by the Fancy Pheasant LLC to have liquor sales for outdoor consumption in a private walkway in the C1 Commercial District for more than 12 days per year. The application was reviewed by the City's Planning and Zoning Commission on June 16, 2022. The Commission passed a motion recommending that the Board approve the application. At least 15 days notice of the time and place of this hearing was published in the Herman Advertiser Courier newspaper. After this hearing is concluded, the Board shall provide its decision within at least 15 days. According to the Municipal Code, the Board of Aldermen may impose conditions on any permit uh, to ensure that the use will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, morals, or welfare of the city, uh, or the citizens of the city, uh, that the use will not injure the use and enjoyment of neighboring properties, that there will be adequate utilities, access roads, drainage, and other necessary facilities provided that the use will not impede the normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding properties, that the use will not cause traffic congestion, and that the requirements for public services such as police and fire protection will not be overburdened. The board may grant a conditional use permit for such a period of time as it finds to be in the public interest. We have a transcript of this hearing being prepared the applicant will have an opportunity to present her case. If there are any documents that the applicant desires the board to rely on, she is invited to submit those as exhibits. If the applicant has any witnesses whom she desires to speak, this will be allowed. And if the applicant is represented by an attorney whom she wishes to speak on her behalf, this also will be allowed. Following the presentation or while any person is speaking, the board may ask questions. Uh, after the applicant has submitted her application, the board will ask for testimony from others present in the room. And at the conclusion of all testimony and comments, the board may deliberate and then vote on the issue. Whether the application is approved or denied will be carried by a vote of the majority of the board members who are present this evening. And I have marked as Exhibit 1 the conditional use permit application that was filed. Exhibit 2 is the affidavit of publication from the newspaper. Exhibit 3 is a copy of the notice of public hearing that was in the newspaper. Exhibit 4 is the minutes of the Planning and Zoning Commission from their June 16th meeting, uh, indicating Mike Langeo made the motion to recommend approval of this permit. Uh, and Connie Johnson seconded the motion, and it was unanimously approved. And Exhibit 5 is a list of those persons who were given actual notice of this hearing living within 185 feet of 209 Schiller Street. And Exhibit 6 is the entire municipal code of the city of Herman. Mayor Cox, do you agree to accept all these exhibits into the record? Yes, sir. Is the applicant here this evening? Well, I don't really have a lot to say. Um, I do have an updated 
layout of the space. Kind of shows you how many tables we'll have. Just six, so we can see like 12 to 15 patrons. Um, and then our plan is to build a bar um, at the east side of the courtyard so we don't have to carry stuff back and forth from the bar. The tables. Did the building inspector say 12? Or did he say you could have 15? I never heard 15. from you. Okay, so just have 15. Okay, good. Questions? So the entrance would be with the stanchions and then they go on the sidewalk to the back little side yard? Uh, yeah, we'll keep the bar stocked. It'll just be like canned stuff basically. Okay. Um, so we don't have to carry stuff back and forth. So just to be clear for everybody, there will be no carrying from the front door to the courtyard. So Correct. people will be entering from the back. Uh, no, well, patrons will be entering from the front, from the sidewalk. Okay, they'll be serving from the front of back. Yep. Very good. Yep. Can we keep this drawing mm -hmm. you've got? Yep. I'll go ahead and mark that applicant's exhibit A for the record. <coughs> Are any beverages going to be served like in a to-go container or is it all going to be consumed on property? Yeah, it'll be consumed on property. We can, I think, like can, probably can beer um, and everything like in plastic to avoid dishes. Questions? It says indefinitely in here, but aren't conditional use permits just for a year? So she just reapply or? Yeah, we will be out for annual renewal. Yeah. All right. I want to make a motion. I move to approve Hannah's fancy pheasant permit. Motion to be made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Corey, who is that that's second with him? Uh, Derek Leroy. Thank you. Do you want me to cut this? Okay. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll move on. Mayor's report. Sorry as usual. I just want to make a per personal note. To, uh, I just wanted to. Uh, reach out and, and thank everybody for the uh, well wishes and so forth for Bobby, my wife, and I's 50th anniversary. We really appreciated all that. And uh, the only thing I really have is, is, you know, Herman is recognized for as pretty as it is and so forth. You know, walking the street the other evening and just noticed, and this is kind of a comment to most of our businesses in town, I guess. You know, you're responsible for, from your building to the the street. Try and uh, spray some of the weeds or pull some of the weeds. I mean, it's looking pretty pretty rough on the sidewalks in our town. Everything else looks pretty nice. It's not everywhere. It's just, you know, it's just very distracting. Just a personal, uh, anyway. So, that's all I really have. City Administrator, report, please. I'll be brief as well. Um, you all received your beautiful bound budgets for the year, right? <laughs> I always feel so good when we get to this point. Um, so this is everything, and no numbers have changed since you've seen this last. Um, this just contains all of the supplementary information, my budget letter, all the graphs and charts, um, and all divided by um, departments. So we'll be voting on that a second time tonight to approve the ordinance. Also, simultaneously, um, on the agenda tonight is the budget amendments for the budget year that we're closing out at the end of June. Uh, that is something we do um, semi-annually. We always do budget amendments uh, mid-year and then here at the end. Um, when we're really uh, cleaning up the budget, it's really my preference as a budget model is um, I like to try to get the numbers, the budgeted numbers, uh, to reflect what actually happened during the course of the year. Um, so it's just evening up the revenues and the expenses. Um, if, so if you have any questions about that, I think I emailed them to you before. So, um, yeah, so we'll need to, we wait to the very last minute to get as many through as possible for the year. So we will need to read that ordinance um, twice tonight. And then as Dave always explains to us, there is a little legal um, caveat that has us do a resolution um, as well. So that's on your agenda. Um, work on the grants continues. We've got the, the airport grant going. Um, we've 
yet to hear back from the engineer about um, the, if the bids will be back in time to consider um, this year yet, this summer. Uh, engineering grant is still in process, and that's in conjunction with the uh, wastewater infrastructure grant. Working on that, and then as I reported a couple weeks ago, we're also working on a new uh, grant for some um, gas line repair funds. Uh, Tammy is not here tonight, but uh, she has been in contact with Destination Services, who we approved at the last meeting to conduct the hotel feasibility study. And they reached out to her for various information about our lodging industry. And I want to thank her for kind of taking the lead on that. And she is meeting with them. I, some of, I will too, maybe the mayor or anybody. Uh, they'll be in town on July 8th and 9th. And Tammy is facilitating setting up some um, interviews and meetings with community leaders and tourism stakeholders. Um, and if you all would like to meet with them, let me know that as well. The only other thing I would say is that the city office will be, the whole city will be closed on Monday, July 4th for uh, 4th of July. And um, yeah, so the city, I always give my little friendly reminder, fireworks aren't allowed in the city limits. <laughs> and the city, we do contribute to the fireworks display. Um, um, we've donated $3,000 um, towards that again this year. My report. Um, since Jesse's here to report on the public works things. Jesse? <clears throat> uh, the electric department has been working on converting the downtown lighting from high pressure sodium to LED. You guys might have noticed a, a slight color change in the lighting. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you'll definitely pick up on more light. So I had a call about that today. Our, you talked about this once. Is, are ours programmable to be dimmer? So they have, they have a possibility of coming on and off or the dimming thing. I don't know if I can do that to all of them or if they're selective. But yeah, these I made sure that we had the ability to pull down individual lights if possible. I got to find out if that program allows each one of those lights to be done or if it works as a group. Okay. That's all uh, software and light bulbs. Like, <laughs> it doesn't even, I can't wrap my head around that that's a thing, but here we are. So will those lights come on if it's daylight? So we can we can program those lights to work off of a clock if we want to and completely do away with our photo cells, which is how they've worked mm -hmm. since time began. Uh, so th these lights are a whole different thing. I have yet to even open the app because we've had it's an app, there's an app for light bulbs. <laughs> so I haven't even opened the app yet. We've been so wrapped up with everything else mm -hmm. going on. We got these lights in like a week and a half ago and it's been a mad dash. So when I get to where I have time to play with them a little bit, I will, uh, I'll give you guys an email with all the features and what we can do and you know, all of that. So if we see some on during the day, just let the city office. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. And th so those light bulbs downtown, if one's on, they should all be on. Okay, this if one's out on the block before you go out of town. So we've had some issues with that one. I think uh, one of the guys saw that the other day. They said it was on in the middle of the day. Yeah, and I think so, there's one on by the bridge too. Okay, yeah, anytime anybody, all of you included, uh, <laughs> anytime you guys see lights out, please call them in because, you know, we don't drive every single block in town when it's dark and we don't know about them if nobody calls them in. So uh, anyway, they've been working on that. Uh, we've also been installing some of the new decorative poles and new LED fixtures in the park. Uh, you guys have probably seen those going in. Uh, that's gonna be kind of a progressing thing throughout the year. Uh, the gas department installed a new service line uh, up north of town to a big chicken building, so that's a, that's a good thing, another customer for us to pick up. Geating has uh, called in locates to start on the Freen Creek crossing again now that rivers are forecasted to drop, so hopefully we can get that done and never have to mess with that again. Uh, the Parks Department, of course, has been busy mowing and they started watering all the young trees that have been planted recently. Uh, I think just tree watering has kept it pretty busy, as dry as it's been. Uh, streets have been obviously mowing grass also downtown, uh, but most of their time has been spent on this Washington Street project, which I'm happy to report wrapped up tonight. We will open Washington Street tomorrow morning for traffic. So uh, I'm super happy that that's over. Uh, should have a good 
good smooth finished product there. So it's kind of exciting. Uh, the wastewater department has been doing their routine maintenance. We're still awaiting our SIP project to go ahead. Uh, the SIP contractors have had some other things come up, so they had to put off being here. Uh, the water department also has been helping with the street department, uh, getting you know all their manhole risers and water valves and stuff put in place and removing the old fire hydrants, all the things that have to be done prior to paving. So it's uh, it's been a busy few weeks. We're getting a lot of stuff done, so that's kind of exciting. Do you guys have any questions? So the sewer liner behind on the south side of First Street is not going in. It, it hasn't. Done, it hasn't been done yet. It's still going to get done. Okay. It just the contractors have not been here to do it. So I noticed two shovels there at the sea beam. Oh, down in the manhole. No, the or steam shovel or whatever you want to call it. Oh, okay. Well, then maybe they showed up today. Yeah, there's two of them sitting there. Uh, like, what wasn't so, there yesterday? I was gonna say I didn't see anybody in town earlier today when I was. Checking stuff out, and so unless it, unless it fell off a truck. Yeah. Well, if it's anything to do with a shovel, yeah. nobody will touch it. Yeah. It's the only tool you can leave on a job site. Nobody will steal that guy. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Jess? Thank you, sir. Citizen public comment. Mr. Stimmy. Uh, I don't know what the new rules are. Hey, Usually give you three minutes. Oh, okay. Talk fast. <laughs> well, I don't really have much to say, except uh, that uh, you know I'm not uh, fully versed on all the issues that that I think you're addressing and in progress on. But the first one is I want to applaud you all for uh, investing in the uh, uh, economic development study. Primarily with regard to uh, the convention hotel, and uh, uh, I'm familiar with uh, cobblestone, and I wouldn't give up on them because they they have been known in certain locations to to uh, design additional facilities. And they're doing this, I think, in concert with local <coughs> investors. So. So maybe we'll have some people that can do some input and maybe perhaps you can give them input. So I uh, applaud you on that and I'm, I'm thankful that you're uh, uh, making, making a study uh, on, on the economic development. I would uh, suggest that, uh, that uh, there might be some other things you can do in addition to those that are already in progress with the mayor and the, and the director of tourism and economic development regard to the uh, pretty because that does, that only effect, does affect a lot a lot of jobs right. and uh, you know the, the other factor is uh, what what does it how does it affect electric rates the, uh, the uh, second thing I, I want to uh, comment on occupancy inspection and I really have a lot of concerns that I don't have time to go into but I'm not as well versed as I should be on what is being planned I just uh, read a draft copy of the minutes and so I know that you're in progress on that with getting uh, a plan or a tentative idea of what the uh, building inspector is planning so so those, uh, those three issues thank you sir Sloan. I reserve any time I had left. <laughs> <laughs> just a couple things too. Just um, I know there's been some talk on the uh, inspection of buildings in Herman, um, businesses, homes, B and B's type thing, and. Uh, it's all in the name of safety, and we all agree with that, and we all think that's a good thing. Um, but I just want to maybe make a point to proceed with caution. Um, when when you have a, a board of aldermen or, or whoever, um, you start to get into possibly some liability issues if, if 
if I was issued a permit to do um, something and I had a letter that stated a facility was in good standing and at some point in time, you know, I'm going to take that certificate there on the wall because it's, it's what I do, put all my licenses on the wall. And uh, I'm buying that license or this um, building permit. So that license has a way of protecting the business and or the entity or the home and also the people who are issuing the license. If something would happen, there's a, a real possibility of, of a backlash of someone saying, well, look, I got this license that says my building is approved and somebody fell in a hole or the hole was under the couch or, or whatever. It, it, it goes both ways. And so I just think you need to really proceed with extreme caution. Um, most businesses, homes, and buildings have some type of safety inspections now. Um, some businesses have safety inspections yearly. Some have them monthly. And some businesses have those safety inspections done every day. And so there's, all, there's already a very large umbrella of activity ensuring that that's taking place. And I just don't want this to become a heavy-handed issue for those folks out there trying to trying to do make a living and get through their daily lives and and uh, food on the table and things of that sort because of added cost to their income right now, especially in this time of day when pricing is everything through the sky sky high. And also just on the comment on printing on things, uh, you know. It's a bad deal for the city. Um, I think that's three minutes. That's three minutes. Okay. I think going forward, uh, maybe that makes the the business of tourism become more important. Uh, you know, that's something we can hang our hat on, and we know we have it. So when we start losing industries, um, we we need to try to keep the other industries very viable. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Clayton, would you like to speak, please? Here, let's get the air back on. Do you want to speak? Clayton, um, I was I was just coming in to uh, to speak about the uh, the art walk. So I don't know if you guys are going to present something about the art walk on Schiller. Um, you guys yeah, it's on our agenda. Okay, yeah, I was just uh, going to voice my opinion and uh, and approval. Um, I've looked at a lot of different things around um, studies and things around the world, read a, read a lot of different things. Um, I was originally trying to find one that I read a couple years ago about a town in Germany, but then I just found like pretty much every city that has a tourism uh, deal in, uh, in America um, has some sort of, of another of, uh, you know, pedestrian only, whether it be certain times of the year or certain, you know, certain streets or certain areas. And I think, um, it varies on the different studies, but what I was seeing was in those areas and the surrounding areas to that, um, it was increasing their, their tourism dollar because people are staying there a little bit longer, uh, finding the different, uh, different things to do. Um, you know, some were, somewhere, some of them were in the 60 percentile. Um, it's not just the places on that street. But I know it's not like some permanent thing that we're looking at or something like that, but, uh, but there has been a lot of activity on these art walks and art is awesome and if we can share art with people, uh, with more people and they can hang out for a little bit longer. That's just one more, as, as Mike said, you know, we kind of lean on tourism a little bit more um, and these art walks are going really, really well. So if we can see those people stick around for a little bit longer, um, enjoy enjoy the, our town a little bit more and uh, and me just being right there, you know, in the center of Schiller, it, it helps me and hurts me as, you know, we're, uh, I don't have anywhere to park, but, uh, but it'll be good to see all that life there on Schiller and all those new businesses and give them a little bit more life and spread out around town, so that was my two cents. All right, thank you. We'll move on to ordinances. All right, the 
first uh, on for this evening uh, is bill number 2022-24. It would be an ordinance to amend the code of ordinances of the city of Herman, Missouri by adding a new chapter, new code chapter 670, food trucks. And so that I think that you are all able to follow along with the drafts uh, being emailed around. Um, we uh, are there in terms of, at least I think, what Tricia and I intend to put out there in light of comments made at the May 9th meeting among the board and some citizens and their attorneys. So it's for you to discuss. Any discussion? So we got the email from Thomas with the Gascony County Health Department um, this afternoon stating that um, he spoke with his supervisor and that the ordinance fits the descriptor of um, what, what is it? Yeah. The requirements. Yeah. So my my issue right now is is the um, us requiring the them to have the Gascony County Health Department inspection before we issue the permit. Um, as far as I'm concerned, that that ball needs to be put in their court. Um, we could communicate with the Gascony County Health Department to let them know when they will be in business, but. As far as I'm concerned, that's their that's their cup of tea, and we don't need to be in the business of regulating them and making sure that they're permitted. Um, as long as we communicate with them when and where they're operating, I think that's plenty for us to be doing. As far as that. Anyone else? Not to have a motion. No. I'll chime in on. I think. We should assist the county health department by requiring this inspection. Now, I know when we had some come in that had been in contact with Gaskinet County, and we issued them a permit, and then Gaskinet County called up and that they did. So I think it is part of our jobs, because we are to hold up the city ordinances, the state statutes, and the Constitution of the United States and requiring a inspection would be part of the state statute that we swore to do. I don't think so. But this is Here, saying, your health department this, guy right here just said we're okay the way we are. So. So their, this, their statute is to regulate that, not ours. So but what he is saying here that we just need to let them know what food trucks are coming and then they'll contact them and set it up, right? And that's the yes, that's the way I understand it. Yeah. how yeah. it has worked in the past, too. Yeah. Is we, city issued an uh, email of what food trucks would be here and what days, then the county would go upon them. But now, if we issue a permit and that slips through the crack legally, and, and Mr. Polite could help us, we issued them a license to operate. So the city could be liable to them. Couldn't the, city, the health department just say, hey, we did their inspection? Or? I'm not sure I follow. Um, what he's saying. The city always has its uh, its old friend, uh, sovereign and official immunity to protect it from liability. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I really just think that it's, it's more of a, a business decision uh, for the board. Uh, do we uh, want to uh, try to sort of work together with the Gascony County Health Department in, in, in uh, tracing and inspecting and, and making sure all these things get uh, inspected, or do we just want to leave it between the food truck operator and the health department? Or something in between, like what we do presently, or is that we would send um, the health department a list of those temporary vendors that were selling food to them and then wash our hands of it, saying, hey, we reported it to you. That's what we've done yeah. for years. <clears throat> and, we're the, and that's our... And the food truck should fall under that same aspect, I think. And if they don't, then we jerk their permit. But all of them are gonna already have licenses through the state and through the counties that they're in and already have health inspections that are, that are valid at the time through the state and the place that they're in too, so like... I, so I just think it, that's something we have no business regulating. Yes, yeah, but it can be required there in space. Yeah, and they'll get it. They'll, they'll they don't honor Franklin County or Warren County. 
And I mean, this is what the communication has been, that if they're going to be operating in Yaskaday County, they wanted to inspect them. Previously, we had talked about other counties. So, where are we talking about changing words? Um, strike number two. Again, we're going to ask you guys. So number section 670.30C, or I'm sorry, D2, is about as uh, simple, I think, as it can get. So if you were to start and, and, and if they, if it's one of these, per this email, if it's one of these uh, outfits that's there 365 days a year, uh, they're going to have a permit, um, and if it's there for two weekends a year, or six or seven or eight, uh, then the, the business, quote, needs to be cleared for a temporary food event, we would, uh, uh, we, well, then we got this. therefore, if the business needs to be cleared, we would be available to work with the truck as long as it would. So I guess they have a, a little bit something less than a, than a permit that they have for a temporary food event. I think the language that we have in here right now just means the city wants something in its file to show that the food truck owner worked with the Cascade County Health Department and has their temporary thing or their permit, or if it's 5.30 on Friday night, uh, you know, that at least they're communicating and the inspector's gonna get there on Saturday morning and we're not gonna pull them up on Friday night, you know, that kind of thing. I don't think most food trucks are going to say, hmm, I got up this morning, I think I'll go to Herman. They're not going to most likely yeah, do that. Those people plan ahead of time. Yeah. It's even hard They're to give them an order for such yeah. a demand for them. Yeah. So what I interpret what County says, they are actually requesting we leave that in as it is. Is that correct? I don't know what their, um, I would have to speculate as to what their intentions are. I think they're just saying this is what we, or what the county does and, and what we want to do. Uh, like I said, if the city wants to see a document from the county health department as part of its file, we can leave it in here as is, uh, or you could choose not to. <coughs> so 670-040-A does say all food trucks should, shall comply with the sanitation standards with of the Department of Health and Safety or Services in the Missouri Food Code. So that's in there, I mean. And then what about B, though? Yeah, that's what I was talking about, county inspection. Yeah. Yeah, I would say if D2 goes, then capital B under 040 would go. I had my reservations initially about putting the burden on the health department, but according to Thomas, they, they want it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's not true. Look, get, give it to them. Yeah. You know, that's the way I look at that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why he sent the letter. It's a little ambiguous when it says perpetual, um, right. but I don't know how many times they have to operate before they become, the county does want them on file. But. They weren't specific, and again, that would be up to them, not us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as we work with them and communicate when and where they're going to be, I think that's all. They want. I think we're you know. okay. So, do we uh, want to make a motion to approve this? Can we approve it with changes? Yeah. It, so it requires two readings. If you want to approve a first reading with a, an amendment, that's fine. We've done that. Before. As is, is fine. I would like to see it stay as is. I would make the motion to leave it as is. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second to leave it as is? And as is says any county in Missouri, so they can have one from anyone. Where does it That's what it says. It says copy of an inspection report from the health department of any county in Missouri. The county you inspection must report. Read the that's the old one. That's the old one. You had the new ones there in your desk. Copy of the inspection report. Oh, sorry. Health. You had too many changes. That doesn't say it has to be turned in before they get the permit. They just need to get a hold of their county. No, it says it has to be. But that's the same thing. Before they get the permit. 
So they can't even get a permit until they have an inspection. Well, they have. It doesn't say that has to be turned in with, I think it should, but if they come in and say they have a Franklin County for this person from Gaspin County, if they had, say, Franklin County, that would get them by until Gaspin County gets to them. Well, that's not what the permit, that's not what the permit says, though. On Part D, the food truck permit application shall include the following. Number two, copy of an inspection report. So they can't even apply for the permit until they get the inspection? That's how I read it. According to Thomas, Jim, as much as I usually agree with you, I say we strike number two. We've got a motion on the floor. Do I have a second on that motion? If not, that motion will die. And we can discuss some more. I think we should continue to discuss. Okay. So. Let's get moving on. We've got a lot of other stuff to cover. So let's get her done. So can we take number D2 out, but put something in everything that we need to go? They need to contact the Gaspin County Health Department for requirements or something? So that they don't have to have this? But I know when I talk to the health department, they're like, if somebody wanted to open a restaurant and have a liquor license, they'd be coming in and getting their inspection. Well, and this is. And it puts it on them. And pardon my own ignorance, but usually they always say, if you've got the question, a lot of other people in the room have the question too. And it's been brought up before. I'm coming to Herman, and maybe I know now that I'm coming to Herman every weekend in October. And I'm going to pull in the first Friday of October with my food truck. What do I do? Do I bring the food truck to Herman sometime between now and October and make an appointment with the Gaspin County Health Department so that they can inspect my food truck before October, and then I get my license and I go home, and then I come back in October and then I've got it? Or do I wait until that Friday when I'm coming to Herman and call the health department and say I'm going to be there at 5 o'clock? But then they come and they inspect and everything looks great, but the city clerk's office is closed. And so I still don't have my city permit for my food truck yet. So it's got to happen ahead of time somehow for somebody to open their awning at 5 p.m. on Friday and be fully permitted according to our own rules. Can we just say something that you have to have a food inspection, but don't say you have to have a food permit? That within a month of getting your permit or within a month of or by the day you're going to serve, you have to have your food inspection? Well, if we said it within a month after, that would kind of defeat the purpose. Right. If they had to have it, I mean, if they had to set it up. If they're operating, they have to have it. Yeah, that's not up. That's not on us. That's on them. Well, I think as we talked, they know ahead of time. They're not going to say Thursday, I'm going to get up and be in Herman at 6 o'clock Friday morning to sell. They know that ahead of time, and they have to get a permit business license anyhow. So at that same time, they should be contacting Gaffney County, say, hey, I'm going to be in Herman on July the 29th, be located at 134 West 4th Street, and then the county can get back with them to a time to see them. And that's what Tom mentioned in there, that they would be available to inspect. So I think you're right. If the vendors actually follow the proper procedure and they come in and they fill out their permit and they do what this says by telling us their location and when they're going to be here, then we, like we've always done, forward that information to the county health department, and then we kind of wash our hands of it. And it's their responsibility to get inspected and to bring us the permit when they get it done. I don't know how else you go about it. So take it out of the application process. Right. Take it out as a condition preceding to getting your city permit. Yeah. Right. It should still get it. Yeah, but ours is more about notifying the county health department, hey, here's who's going to be here and when, balls in your court, and then those people will bring us the permit when they get it. Basically doing what we're doing with everybody else is what it amounts to. And then if our 
ordinance enforcement officer or policeman or somebody is wandering around on Saturday afternoon and says, let me see your permit, they better have it. Or, or their health inspection correspondence or checklist or whatever. And I think, yeah, Thomas could not get to him because of something else he had to do. He would probably say, you know what, here, you're okay right now, but I still want to inspect Or show them your yeah. St. Charles County yeah. one or something yeah. like that. So how do we word this to make this be read? How do we say it? We just strike D2 and 670040 capital B. Alright. 670040. B. 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 B
discussion or question? If not, I entertain a motion. I move that bill number 2022-27 be second read. Motion been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Vote carried. Next for second reading is bill number 2022-28, an ordinance providing for the budget for the city of Herman, Missouri for fiscal year 2022-2023 and establishing a salary schedule for officers and employees of the city of Herman, Missouri for fiscal year 2022-2023. Any discussion on that? Now I've got a motion. I move to approve bill number 2022-28, second read. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next for second reading is bill number 2022-29, an ordinance to approve a municipal services contract buying between the city of Herman, Missouri and Mary Huntsman doing business as the computer lady. Questions? I have a motion. Move 2022-29, second read. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next for second reading, bill number 2022-30, an ordinance to approve a municipal services contract buying between the city of Herman, Missouri and Jennifer Davis for marketing and website services. Questions? Now a motion, please. I move the bill number 2022-30 be second read. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next for second reading, bill number 2022-31, an ordinance to approve a municipal services and material contract buying between the city of Herman, Missouri and KE Butterfield, LLC to provide blog and content writer services. Discussion? Motion? Move 2022-31, second read. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next for second reading, bill number 2022-33, an ordinance to amend sections 220-190, 220-200, 220-210, and 220-220 of the municipal code in prescribing a schedule of rates for refuse container leases for garbage and refuse collection, for billing and collection services by the city, for recycling charges, and for maintenance. Second reading, do I have a motion? I make the motion 2022-33 be second read. Motion made, second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next is bill number 2022-36, the first reading, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2246 regarding the budget for fiscal year 2021-2022. Any discussion on this? Can I have a motion? I move to approve bill number 2022-36, first read. Motion made, second. Second. Motion made, second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. We need to read that a second time, please. Bill number 2022-36 for second reading, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 2246 regarding the budget for fiscal year 2021-2022. Do I have a motion? I move to approve bill number 2022-36, second read. Motion made, second. Second. Motion made, second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next for first reading, bill number 2022-37, an ordinance authorizing the execution of an agreement for services between the City of Herman, Missouri and the Herman Area Hospital District and Oates Incorporated. Any discussion on this? This is a very, very important service. I move to have it be read. Motion's been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. We need to read that one again also. Bill number 2022-37, an ordinance authorizing the execution of an agreement for services between the City of Herman, Missouri and the Herman Area Hospital District and Oates Incorporated. Motion. Before we move, just, I don't know if it's a clerk, if it's a typo, but it's not listed 2022, it's 2021. Oh, it is. Well, that would be just a typo. That's my error, sorry. 
Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I Thank you. <coughs> I move to approve bill number 2021 that, or 2022-37 second. Motion been made, do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second, all in favor, right? Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Next, for first reading, bill number 2022-38. An ordinance to approve a municipal services and material contract by and between the city of Herman, Missouri and Manda Media to provide digital social media marketing. Questions on that one? Tammy's not here, so. Not good. I have a motion. Move to approve 2022-38. Motion been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Is this here. the second reading or first? That's the first reading. Okay. And then we will move to resolution. Resolution number 1321, the resolution to describe the facts and reasons for a necessary amendment to the city's budget for fiscal year 2021-2022. This is what Trisha was referring to earlier about the quirk in the statute that says you need to pass a resolution every time you pass an ordinance to amend a budget. And we have backup documentation for every single line item that you guys right. ever interested. Okay. Any motion? I move to approve resolution number 1321. Motion been made. I have a second. Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carried. Okay. Right. Next would be a resolution to identify to the Missouri Ethics Commission the established method of disclosure of potential conflicts of interest and substantial interest by certain officials, officers, and employees of the city of Herman. This is something that we're required to do by the state. So if, uh, they just want to know that we have our conflict of interest ordinance on file, and if there's going to be any changes, they sure have not. Right. I have a motion to approve that. Motion to approve resolution 1322. Motion to be made. I have a second. Second. Motion to be made. Second. On the paper, right? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move on to old business. Under old business, occupancy permits, building permit fees. Uh, I need to, I think what we need to do is, I think we need input from the public on this. This, this is going to, going to affect a lot of people down the road. And I'm hoping that Ray puts a good description what of I'm, what I'm, What I'm did. saying is, I want, real estate agents, I want people that own property, I want people that are considering selling their houses to reach out to the city office, me or the older people, and let us know what you think about this. I mean, this is, this is uh, I, I know a lot of other towns and cities have these type of uh, rules. It doesn't mean we have to do it as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I'm one of these guys that I don't like any more rules than we have to have, but I think it can, affect a lot of people in many different ways. And I think, like Mike said earlier, you know, we need to walk gingerly before we jump into this. And I really think that talk to your neighbors and, and business people and, and we, we would appreciate, or I would appreciate input and opinions and recommendations of what you all think we should do with this. I just don't think the body up there should just make a snap decision. And so with that, as far as I'm concerned, I, I don't think we need to move. Mr. Mayor, yes, would it be possible to have a workshop type thing on this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess that's a possibility. If there's enough, um, maybe. If there, yeah, I think there will feel out and see if we get any response first, uh, you know, and uh, like I say, I just, uh, I just don't want to jump into it real quick. So, could yeah. people want, could they have, like, things that we have here that we've looked at. We can have access Absolutely. to them. Absolutely. We can make little packets like that available that are, there's samples of um, occupancy permits and checklists that other cities have. Um, so you can kind of get an idea of what, what it is. Permit one might look like. Anyway, let's make baby steps is what I'm saying. Okay. okay. Is that okay with everybody up here? Yes. My statement? If so, we'll just move forward then. Does that have to remain on the agenda for the next one then? Because it, it doesn't have to. It's your call, really. Okay. okay, is there any other old business? The case B69 lines. 
Jeff, so um, easements were sent to Central Electric. Uh, they reached out to Jesse with a question, or Jesse reached out. There's been uh, some back and forth on those. I haven't spoken to the lawyer for them, but the, this Mike Bax, Jesse. Um, and Jesse are working on that, yes, so there's progress being made. Yes. Any other old business? One thing I, I may want to add. I know we went past it, but on that occupancy permit, it, to me, I think there's two different things here to, to discuss. Maybe, maybe we could handle it, or it might actually requesting to look into what we charge for the permits. Right. And so they're two that's separate, basically a separate issue. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we could separate them and attack them individually. Okay. Uh, any uh, new business? New business. We'll move in to motions. I have a motion to uh, approve the minutes from our last meeting. I move to approve the minutes. Motion to make second. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Okay. Invoices for payment. I move to pay the bills. Motion to pay the bills. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Conditional use permit renewal for Missouri Vacation Rentals LLC, Etchmill, 210 East 4th Street, owner unoccupied guest house. I move to approve. We have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Still carried. Uh, approved annual renewal of CTM distribution for rack car distribution for tourist department. Mm -hmm. uh, for you, um, move that. Um, Derek, have you heard any um, in the Tourism Commission meetings? How successful has that been? How much volume I think, are we I think that have? the volume was as stated. I think it was a little down. I don't remember off the top of my head how much exactly. I think with COVID, it wasn't as much as we were expecting. But I think it still is a, a, a wise investment. I think yeah. for. 7,500, it's, it's a lot of exposure. Not off the top of my head. Any other discussion? Do we have a motion to approve? I'll move to approve. Motion, do I have a second, please? I'll second. Motion made and second on the paper, Ann? Aye. Any opposed? July 2022 20, liquor license renewal. Questions? If we're looking at this all in one, I do have one question, and it's uh, on the piano bar, where there again looks like there's two different items that should be separate, one from the liquor license, but it's got including the outdoor seating. Included oh, with the liquor license. The liquor license, what that's supposed to mean is that the liquor license just includes their outdoor seating, that they're licensed for that area. Yeah, that's all that means. Approving right now the no, renewal of the outdoor seating. No. Seat. Okay. No. That's all right. Okay. okay. And you'll notice there is that one outstanding. Um, if we can go ahead and approve it tonight, we will hold their license, the family dollar, until we get um, payment. They're having a hard time uh, reaching their corporate office. Um, for payment, but they know how important it is, and we've visited them in person, so they're, they're working on that. So we give them like a time limit. Or? Well, the, well, if we don't have payment, then they will their license will have expired on the first. Yeah. Okay. okay. I have a motion to approve the flicker license. Motion to approve. The motion made. Second. Second. Motion made. Second. All in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Here. Approved bid from Beasley for cyber liability insurance policy. Everybody is aware of what's going on with this? Any questions? If not, do I have a motion to approve? I move to approve. Motion to be made. Do I have a second? <coughs> second. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Point Becky Myers to the Arts Council. 
I move to approve back to my original appointment. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So carried. Next, we've been application for the Herman Arts Council request to close Schumer Street from 1st to 4th with open container permission from 2 p.m. to 8 p.m. in conjunction with the First Friday Art Walks for additional artists and food and drink vendors July 1st and August 5th, 2022. Open for discussion. I would like to discuss this a little bit. I can understand the closing of Schumer Street to allow the, the cracks to happen but I'm not in favor of the open container being done away with. I think it's going to be very, very hard to be done. If I'm on First Street, I can't drink it, but if I step on Schiller Street, now we're asking, it's I'm, fine. I'm with the Arts Council, may I? Yeah. Yes. Sir. Okay, so who's we were planning Arts Council on this is done before her, which is in wines and uh, whatnot. We're planning on having someone at the beginning of the street and the end of the street with trash cans to collect containers as they come in and out. We want to give, it's been super hot, we've had artists um, wanting to cancel because of the heat, so we're trying to give them an opportunity to come and set up a tent for shade, as well as the buildings on, that, on the west side, I believe, of the street provide some shade as well. There's, what, five, businesses on that street that sell liquor and five, right? Four, four, four and a half. <laughs> and then uh, in the future, we're talking about possibly getting some food trucks and maybe um, Stone Hill Winery and Adam Pucha to come set up trucks for slushies and whatnot. Uh, definitely no with the open container because you would have to have somebody at each alley where people can walk in. Let's say I'm on 4th Street. If I'm on 4th Street, have an open container, I'm subject to be... Okay, to so let me that. ask you, how is that done for witches and wine? Well, that is brought to my attention, and we'll have to reconsider that this year, too. Has Marlon looked at this? Does he know that? Is he here? Marlon's, Marlon's here. here. Yeah. Can you speak to witches and wine and if there's been any um, issues and how you enforced um, their open container during? There's no, there's no issues reported to us when they have the event. So. so you put barricades at all of the. Uh, they have barricades and people stay within it. They have workers at each exit or whatever the trash can make sure people aren't leaving. Can we give them the yeah, signs to the post that say? Yeah, I think it's on. We're posting along the street. And Are you worried about traffic? No parking? No, I mean, it's like everything they got. I mean, it's, it's, uh, was it one day or what is it? It's just going to be the first Friday of every month for, we're asking for the next two months, but we might want to extend that for two more months. Okay. Just during the hot. All the shows be shut down? Pardon me? So all the shows will be shut down from first to fourth? Yes, just for from two to seven or eight. Now, would the intersection be open to go? Um, big strong no vote to me because we don't allow food trucks to sell intoxicating beverages either and to me to be set up to sell there then how do you enforce it if I buy one on Schiller and I go up 3rd Street as I said we'll have people at all the exits entrance we have plenty of volunteers to help us with that the food trucks wouldn't be selling liquor well they I'll just the wineries have their own vendor sitting on the street I'd rather see the street closed instead of the sidewalks. 
because I know this last time the ADA five foot regulation is not there for the crap fair to be sitting on the side. Yeah, we, it's this will give an opportunity for the artists to have a lot more room. We actually have a, no, a few other artists that have really large setups. Um, the one is like a trailer and he does live glass demonstrations. So we would definitely put him there because there's no room for him on the sidewalk. So this is just for two months, so it's kind of an experiment to see if it works it's, and how it's it It's an works experiment to see if it will work, and if it does, it works out for the artists and whatnot. Like I said, we may want to extend it for September and October, depending on... The main reason was to get the artists out of the heat. Because in June, you had 60-some-odd different vendors? Was, was that Random. the number? Yeah, it was 48, I believe, is what okay. it ended up being. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's very and it's just getting bigger every time, so. I think the Arts Council and Miranda and Mark Dennis for bringing it to life even more. The, as far as the opening container goes, I mean, we're not selling anything on the street at this point or the sidewalk. Um, that the, and the businesses who are selling, that's, you know, they're, as they should do every day, police that. Not leaving and not allowing moving containers to leave their premises. And the, the council has signage and somewhat at each end of it. They'll be monitoring. And it's for two months. Right. Yeah, and I mean, at this point, you don't, I mean, we don't see many drunk people between the times <laughs> of noon and. I have. And if they're going to door at eight in. on a Friday afternoon, most of the time that's when people are coming in. To Uh, just a quick comment. I would really be concerned as a lodging business for having three uh, facilities, particularly for September and October, because uh, uh, we're nearly booked solid and people are coming in on Friday. So the, the every, every lodging business that's located on, on Schiller Street can park on the side streets. I looked at that today because that was one of my thoughts too. Well, I, I just say really just people moving about the town on Friday afternoon into the evening. And this is just for July and August though. Yeah, July and August is fine, but, but I think it, it really needs to be. We can address that in two months as long as okay. we can approve them. Uh, All right, any other discussion? So we can, can, can we clarify? I'm, I'm not sure I understand yet. So. Um, for the open container, are are you tabling that, or are we still considering that? If we're considering it, I have a question. <laughs> I don't have a problem with it, but they're the ones. I guess my question it. was, we just do. I think we ran into this problem before. Just we need to just decide up front if businesses who sell alcohol, if their patrons are allowed to bring those drinks out into the closed street. They're that not supposed to. Even but I mean, if the street is closed and we're allowing open containers. Are we going to allow people to bring drinks out of existing bars and restaurants, or can they all, are the open containers only going to apply to people who've been meeting on the street? How does it work with which is the one? People sell it on the street. Like, well, I think that's why I bring it up, is because I so think it's been an issue. On the street. Yeah. Well, it would be really nice for all of us five businesses if we could, because I have like, a lot of canned stuff, and, yeah. you know, if people could, it, it would just make it, in my opinion, more right. enjoyable. I know, like if for people my could concerts, leave your business with a drink and then go down the street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know, like for my concert series, mm -hmm. like people are going to have alcohol and we're just required to have somebody at each exit on the 5th Street or Cooper or, Pitts or Fourth Street and a sign that says no alcohol past this exit. So I don't see how it would be any different if we shut something else down. And you don't allow, like, no like I couldn't go to your place and buy a drink and then go over to his place with a drink from there. I wouldn't let it in. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't let, like, somebody, somebody walk in. Somebody else bring a drink in, just like anybody else. But yeah, like, that wouldn't be a lot. You know, if there's, if I have a, my artist is on the sidewalk and my artist wants to come in and get uh, a whiskey and soda and take it out and sit at his vendor table, like I don't see it. Well, wouldn't he require the stuff it out of their glass of a solo cup? Or so we we, or we would have some special some special containers for that specific one with some disposable containers for that specific. Do we 
have signage anywhere? Oh yeah. yeah. Every business is supposed to have it visible. But I mean, does the city have signage like tents, A-frame tents, for street closures? Just on barricades, right? Yeah, barricades saw horses up to block the street. Yeah. I have to block it at first, <laughs> second. But their point is why, I'm sorry. Um, their point is why I wanted to bring that up because I know it had been an issue with the bitches and wine at one point about <clears throat> how those brick and mortar businesses, how they could or could not participate right. when the street is closed. I think we should just let the brick and mortar fall off the wall the time. Yeah, I mean, especially for July, too, specifically. I mean, the point is to keep the artist out of the sun and then provide some beverage options, and because of the heat, I mean, I know it's alcoholic beverage, but it's still going to help beat the heat of our 90 degree weather coming up in July and August. Yes. Mike, you want to make so a real quick comment, I would, I would think it would be up to the Arts Council and the participating businesses to prove that this, this will work, and they would have June or July and August to, to make it work. And you'll know if it don't work because the police will let you know. I, I am sure of that. Okay. Let's move forward. I move to approve this from 2 to 8 with the businesses that sell alcoholic beverages being allowed to sell them. That so I think we just want to, if your motion is going to be to permit open containers, including brick and mortar businesses participating. Or the block section of Shiller Street. Yes. The other people that sell we won't fall underneath this. No. So we're biased, we're right. doing something for someone that we're not doing yeah, for somebody else. That's true. We're not doing the ordinance equally and fairly to all licensed places. Well, you don't do that for which is the wine either. I should say that's right. just the, the closest thing I can compare to what we want to do. Did it my fest also used to take place just on Schiller? Yeah, and my fest also, yeah. Okay. We have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Motion to make second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carried. Okay. Special event application Chamber of Commerce Independence Day celebration activities concert at the amphitheater on July 2nd. Vendors at Riverfront Park. Fireworks and parade on July 3rd, 2022. Motion to approve. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. What's the main second on favor, right? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. Special event application to Boy Scouts, food and first aid stand, Riverfront Park Pavilion, July 13th through the July 15th, 2022. That's for that boat. Yeah. Thing that they do. Got a motion to approve. I'm going to approve. Motion to made. Second. Second. Motion to made. Second. All in favor, right? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Still carried. Special event application for Burnway Distilling Company anniversary celebration festivities with a beer garden at the George Johnson Park, August 20th, 2022. Discussion. Motion to approve. I have a motion. I have a second. I'll second. Motion made and second. All in favor, right? Aye. Any opposed? So carried. <clears throat> Special event application, Herman Lyon Globe Pickleball Tournament Fundraiser Tennis Courts for the oh. September 24th and 25th. <clears throat> motion to approve. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. Motion made a second on the paper. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. No further business. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Nice motion to adjourn. Motion to be made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So carried. Thank you everyone for being here. Getting and happy Fourth of July. Be here before we know it. <laughs>